iguana. There are at least three creative ways that developers can use JavaScript to help scientists discover alien civilizations. Number one, JavaScript can be used to detect artificial extraterrestrial alien signals in a very creative way. Number two, JavaScript can be used to discover alien planets in a very creative way. And finally, number three, JavaScript can be used to infiltrate the secret community of Michael Douglas's duplicates. <sighs> there still could be more though, but let's talk about the first two. Hi there, Phil here. I was born on the same date the first man went to space, and I was an aspiring astronaut up until the age of four. But because of an unfortunate accident involving a blind donkey and a motorized cabbage cultivator, I became a web developer and a designer instead. When I'm not having a nightmare about the donkey, I dream about space. Is it all lost for us creative people who once dreamed about being scientists and explorers of space? Or do we still have a chance? No! Ah! Just like astronomer, doctor, alien or Arrowway in the 1997 movie Contact successfully connected with Matthew McConaughey, JavaScript could be successfully connected to a radio telescope to read its data and search for extraterrestrial signals. But how do you do that? This is actually a very simple procedure. I will tell you how it's really done in a second. But before I do, please remember this. Connecting JavaScript to a radio telescope is extremely not important. What's important is what you do with it after. I can explain. First of all, you'd need a radio telescope. A very powerful one. Like this powerful. Actually, this is exactly the telescope we will use. Because you can connect to it with JavaScript. The Green Bank Telescope in West Virginia, USA. The world's largest fully steerable radio telescope. Weights 7.5 tons, stands 485 feet tall or 148 meters tall, which is a height of a 50-story building or a 148 meter tall stick. And it has the surface area of the dish of 100 to 110 meters. One of the builders was a little cross-tied. But how on earth do you connect to it with JavaScript? Well, this is how. This URL can be accessed from your browser or programmatically, and it returns a JSON object that contains the GBT telescope observation data. In this case, because we specified it in the URL, the data is for the star KIC 8462852, also known as the What the F star, located in the constellation Cygnus. 1,470 light years away from Earth, and the star is known for unusual light fluctuations that can't be yet explained for certain. In this object there is a link to the H5 file containing all the observation data. How is it possible? The breakthrough listen. The largest ever scientific research program aimed at finding civilizations beyond Earth. This program includes a survey of 1 million stars closest to Earth. It scans the center of our galaxy and the entire galactic plane. And beyond the Milky Way, it listens for messages from 100 galaxies that are closest to ours. On their website, they provide a lot of instruments that you can use to help discover artificial extraterrestrial signals. And one of those instruments is the API that provides access to the data from three telescopes. And API stands for Application Programming Interface. It also stands for abandoned poop tinta eagles and artificially propelled iguana. But that's... <clears throat> API is a common concept in programming, allowing the creation of applications that access the data of an operating system, another program or an online service. So in this case you can use the API of this program to access the data of the telescope. And then there is also life that is not intelligent, just like us, or maybe is not technologically advanced and does not send out any signals. The APF telescope, Automatic Planet Finder. The first robotic telescope capable of detecting exoplanets that might support life. Not only the APF telescope is used to discover potential laser signals, it's also used to discover habitable exoplanets. And in addition to the Breakthrough Listen project, there is also the Caltech Exoplanets API, where new exoplanets can be discovered by analyzing data in the NASA Exoplanets Archive. And you can search for these planets by basically looking for transit signals, which basically occur when a planet is passing in front of the host star, causing a slight dip in the star's brightness. 
However, this is all bullshit. You probably should not use JavaScript for it. Because using JavaScript to process complex data is probably not the best idea. Instead, you are better off with a more powerful server-side language, like say Python, that would analyze all the data and feed it to JavaScript. And yet, even if you still don't use JavaScript for signal processing, it would still be the one responsible for discovering an extraterrestrial signal or an exoplanet, but how? The answer lies deep within these three characters. Or these two. Or maybe these 23. These are the programming languages typically used for building games. Well, apart from the third one, that's just a word I made up. It doesn't matter. What matters is that designers and developers are already doing it. They're doing what they do best, which is design and development. Sometimes it's taxidermy, but usually it's design and development. And by doing it, they help scientists make groundbreaking discoveries. But how? Well, by building games. Fold it. Folded is a puzzle game developed by the university scientists that involves folding and manipulating protein structures in three dimensions. Players can collaborate with each other and join groups to work together on more challenging puzzles. Folded has been successful in generating new insights in protein folding and has been used to solve several previously unsolved protein structures. See Hero Quest. The game is designed to simulate navigating through different environments, such as oceans, islands and rivers. As players navigate through the game, their movements are tracked and recorded, providing researchers with valuable data on spatial awareness and navigation abilities. And the game has been used by researchers to study dementia by analyzing the data collected from players, which helps identify early warning signs of the disease. Colony B Colony B is a mobile game developed at McGill University that allows players to participate in research in microbiology. Every game you play helps scientists understand the microscopic life in the human gut. The solutions to the puzzles that players are solving help identify groups of people with similar microbes. This information enables to reveal links between the microbes living inside us and our lifestyle or health condition. And actually, there is this whole project called Citizen Science Games, which is a part of the bigger Citizen Science project, where volunteers in collaboration with scientists get involved in various scientific projects. So why are these games not built with JavaScript? Well, I have no idea. Did you know that the computer that took man to the moon in 1969 was actually 5000 times slower than your iPhone? Modern browsers are becoming more and more powerful and are capable of incredible things. So using all that data from all those telescopes, you can build a game with JavaScript and HTML5. Players could navigate through a virtual universe, discover new worlds, complete missions, gather resources, colonize territories, team up with other players to solve difficult problems, and Patrick Stewart. <laughs> the obstacles and the enemies could be generated based on the data from the telescopes. The stars, galaxies, and planets could be real, and the players' movements and interactions with the world could help process all that data or train machine learning algorithms, which could be used to analyze the data from the telescope, helping to identify patterns that are indicative of extraterrestrial signals or exoplanets. So this is how JavaScript can be used to help us discover extraterrestrials in a very creative way. And if you're just starting with a web dev, a web design on JavaScript, remember that learning modern web dev does not necessarily mean that you will be working in a web dev. And this is good, because it gives you a lot of opportunities.